I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Davis Guggenheim, the director of the Apple original documentary, still a Michael J. Fox movie, as part of our Meet the Experts film documentary panel. Uh, first question I want to ask is, that what's, what's really noticeable about this documentary is that you use actual like re filmed recreations of certain events but but kind of from a distance but you do but you did film those and i was curious as to what made you decide to actually film those recreations of the events in michael's life well like a lot of the documentaries you're seeing this year there are parts of the person's story that there weren't any there weren't cameras there and so there are parts of michael's early life that um um that we just needed to capture but we did, we, we, we had an early instinct, which was, what if you can make a documentary that felt like a Michael J. Fox movie? And so we took that idea and we started using footage from his movies to, to portray. So the, the movie is actually a mix between summer recreations and using some of his movies from the 80s, especially in ways you, you, you don't expect. And that's, that's a tribute to Michael Hart, the editor who was really my creative partner on this. Uh, was it ever a, a challenge to get, What because the, the thing about the movie is that the, the tone is, it kind of goes back and forth between comedy and tragedy. And uh, was it ever a challenge to get the tone of the movie right in terms of how it feels, you know, going back between the back and forth between those two? I love that question. And I think it, the tone, I, I was, um, a student of David Milch, who did uh, Deadwood. We did Deadwood together. We did NYPD Blue together. And his thing was all about tone. Um, and finding the tone is always um, really, important, uh, really hard and really important. It, the breakthrough was we were, we were editing. There's a scene where Michael J. Fox wakes up in present day. Uh, he's in his early 60s. And we're used to remembering him as Marty McFly, but now you see him now and he's had Parkinson's for more than 30 years. And you see that his foot is tight and he's having a hard time putting his feet in his slippers and then he's brushing his teeth and you see his hand shaking. And that's in there early in the movie intentionally to dispel people's intentions or to subvert people's intentions, which is to say that they're, they think they're gonna watch, oh, it's a movie. It's a sad movie about a guy with Parkinson's because the next line is I'm I say to him it, it was that was when I was interviewing him I wasn't thinking about this but this is what Michael Hart and I put in the editing room was I said you know is this a sad sack story of a movie star that gets Parkinson's and is cr and it crushes him and he takes this long pause and he goes that's boring and then you see him <laughs> walking to work and 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 the movie goes on so he and that that tone comes from Michael. Michael J. Fox. Uh, this, this, it, he he insists that you not pity him. Uh, he wants to be seen as a full, a, a dimensional human being, not a person with a disability. So, how did this project come about? Were you particularly uh, a fan of Michael J. Fox prior to this? I mean, I don't really know anybody who isn't, but <laughs> I was a casual fan. Uh, Michael Hart, the editor, was a a rabid fan, and he has a great story about getting a hoverboard. Uh, delivered to his apartment in 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 Belfast, not Belfast, um, Dublin, and um, and he's like, well, who sent me a, 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 a hoverboard? And he went online and he realized that he was drunk the night before and had ordered it and, and forgot about it. He's such a rabid fan. Um, but I it, the, I came to me um, during COVID. To be honest with you, I was not looking for a movie. I was sort of in the middle of that winter, feeling sorry for myself feeling like I was in a creative rut. And I just read an interview with Michael J. Fox and was just interested. And uh, he had had this terrible fall. He was running late for a Spike Lee movie uh, and he had this fall and he couldn't, he couldn't get up to, to, to reach the phone to call to, for not, not just an ambulance, but also to tell Spike Lee that he, that, that he couldn't be there. And, and the way he wrote about it, the way he spoke about it was actually very witty and, and, and was a hint the tone that you're talking about that, that we were that we really wanted to get capture in the movie and I and I read it and I was like wow this could be a, this could be a, a good movie um uh I I am very curious how much family ties did you have to watch in order to find the right clips to use for this film well a lot of family ties and a lot um and a lot of everything I mean the 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 the, the, the 
and this goes back to Michael Hart. I think a good example, Spin City, where it's towards the end of the movie and he has Parkinson's, but he hasn't told anyone. He hasn't didn't tell Gary David Goldberg, the showrunner, the other producers. Um, and yet his Parkinson's is getting worse. And he writes about it in his book that he was hiding, that he was uh, his hand would be shaking if his medication ran out. And we went and, and, and we said, what if we could find that on the shows? And there's a sequence in the movie, which is really quite extraordinary, which is, you know, he's he's acting and he's being that that that, that um, charismatic character. But you could see his left hand twisting or you could see him holding a piece that uh, uh, holding an object in his hands that doesn't shake. And it's wild to think of using Spin City like archive or like verite, you know, um, and, and, and that was, I think, the, uh, an incredible breakthrough in our movie to, 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 because he's a public figure and he's in all these TV shows. Why not in these movies? Why not use that as, as kind of an archive? Um, uh, we see, of course, the films about Michael, but we also see a good amount of Tracy. Um, we didn't see, um, as much of, uh, his, uh, his four kids. And I'm just curious as to, uh, why we didn't see more of them in the film. Well, there's a, my favorite scene in the movie, uh, and, and, uh, you know, at Sundance, it got the biggest laugh is them in their kitchen. Oh, yeah, that's a great scene. I think they're making quesadillas and um, uh, th th their kids are older now. So they they weren't around. A lot of them, uh, the youngest is, a, I think, was a sophomore or junior in college and the rest are out. That's one reason. The other reason is that um, I think they're very private, you know, and it's really Michael's story. And to the extent that we use his family is when when he talks about how you know, they keep him honest and they, and they, and, they, and I love what he says about, you know, they don't treat him any differently. They, they treat him like the, the, like the, 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 the annoying dad with the dad jokes and, and they're giving him, they're giving him crap in that scene. So I think we, we put in family that, that when, when it really, when the movie sort of asked for it, you know. Uh, was there, uh, uh, was there anything that, uh, uh, Fox uh, uh, or, or Michael just didn't uh, was was touchy about including in the film in terms of footage you captured or a certain aspect of his life. Uh, everything we put everything in we wanted. I had final cut, and then we had this one nervous moment because I always show my movies to the subjects. I'm, I want them to, to to watch it, and also maybe there's something that they notice about it that we got wrong or. Or maybe there's a way they could, you know, like, you don't, don't, there's a, there's a photograph of that that I forgot to give you. You know, sometimes some, you, it's additive. And there was this, when I showed it to him, he goes, you know that scene um, uh, when I come back to Family Ties after, after Back to the Future, he's the biggest movie star in the world. He's got Back to the Future and Teen Wolf, the number one, number two movies of the summer and the number one TV show. And he's kind of being a jerk. Uh, he is being a jerk. And he says, you know that footage you have of, of me being a total asshole? And I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, he's going to, he's going to, we're going to have an argument about this. And he goes, where do you find that? I love that. Uh, and uh, to me, that's a, a sign of there's something special about him that he, he would, and, you know, and um, uh, Lauren alluded to this, uh, Pete alluded to this, is the, 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 the the success of any of these movies is the openness of the of the characters who are in it and the trust that they have with you. And Michael just just opened himself up to me. And and there were, he had nothing he had nothing to hide. And and, and that, I think you see that in the movie. It, does he still like have that act like that bug, like that acting bug in him? Like he still wants to uh uh perform because I mean he was, I mean, you include some of the footage in your movie, you included the brilliant guest stint he did on Curb Your Enthusiasm, yeah. and he even won an Emmy for uh, Rescue Me uh, uh, for playing a really funny uh, character on that. Does he still have that like sort of bug in him? I was in New York last week, and I and I I, I, I went up to his office, and we 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 had a couple hours together, and he's still dropping one liners. He's still wickedly funny. I think I think he, it's interesting. I think. The one thing I learned on this movie, my my movies in the past have been pretty serious. Not many funny, not many laughs in my movies. A lot of laughs in this one, and, and I really appreciate. I really learned that 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 humor isn't just something silly. There's the the, the good humorists 
and and Michael and I learned that Michael is one of them, are 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 giving you a joke that that, that is leading to some kind of pearl of wisdom, and I think that's, I think that's him. Like it, it it's getting to a truth that sort of the facts don't get you to, and I, and and uh, and and I really appreciate that part of him. Well, uh, Davis, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best, and we look forward to seeing you in our panel in just a little bit. Thank you.